Okay, well, I want to welcome our Chemistry 108 students to our uh, discussion with a former Golden Eagle, Shelby Dickerson, uh, and uh, she was here as an undergraduate student from 2012 to 2016 as a, as a chemistry major, and so, Shelby, I'm going to turn it over to you to tell them a little bit about uh, why you chose chemistry, biochemistry as your major when you were here as an undergraduate. Thank you, Dr. Masterson. Um, I, I chose chemistry um, because I just loved the subject in high school. I really liked the idea that extremely small particles or interactions determined how the world worked, and that was very fascinating to me. It was really the only subject that stood out to me as something I really, truly enjoyed, other than math. But, um, yeah, it just, it just stuck, um, as most people would say. Okay. Well, fantastic. So one of the things uh, that you, you were part of the Honors College when you were here, and so you had to do research as part of your uh, program, but also all chemistry majors have to do research at some point. Could you tell the students a little bit about when you got involved with undergraduate research, about how long you spent doing undergraduate research before you graduated? Yes, so I actually started my freshman year of undergraduate in my spring semester, I believe, in Dr. Carl Wallace's research group. Um, and inorganic chemistry. Um, that was an experience because I haven't really had any um, exposure to chemistry research. So there was a lot of insecurity about, I don't know what is going on or anything like that, but it was okay because the graduate students and Dr. Wallace were very welcoming. They're very much understood the limits of an undergraduate, especially a freshman. And I learned quite a few skills under Arendra, who was my first graduate student I worked under. And so I worked in Dr. Wallace's lab for, I think, a year, and then I switched into Dr. Masterson's um, organic research for the summer before my junior year. Um, and I worked for him until I graduated. I, I had just finished his Organic 1, Organic 2 honors class, and I loved it. I loved reactions. I loved substitution reactions, um, the elimination. The Grignard was my favorite. Um, and I just really liked doing the things that I was learning about in the classroom. And it's frustrating um, doing organic research. It can be because it's very synthesis heavy. Some, most of it is, um, but it's very rewarding when you isolate that first product or that first molecule you've been trying for months to work with. And I just, I just really enjoyed it. And I actually remember the first time Dr. Masterson asked me to present at a conference. It was MAS, um, which is a conference held usually on the campus at University of South, um, Southern Mississippi, if I remember correctly. Whoa, yeah. And I remembered him telling me the abstract was due that day. And he had said that instead of doing a poster presentation, he wanted me to do an oral. And I was like, no. <laughs> he was like, yes. And I was like, no. He was like, no, but yes. Did I and say so, that? <laughs> yes, I remember that. Um, and so I gave my talk and I was so nervous. I remember the practice talk I gave in our research group because you'll have research group meetings where you update your progress in the lab. And it was supposed to be a 13 minute talk and I gave it in four minutes. And I remember him saying just for he's like, OK, so slow down. <laughs> and then we went on and actually I ended up placing first in the oral presentation that year. And that was that was amazing. And it was also very validating because, and they'll tell you this if you decide to do research, when you're presenting, you are the expert on what you're talking about. No one else in the room is going to know what you're saying more than you will. And that's very rewarding. Um, and I absolutely thrived off of that. And um, the summer before my senior year, I applied for a research experience for undergraduate, which is an REU program you might hear about if you um, decide to do research where you actually get paid to do research in another lab and it um or another university and it'll last for a month during the summer and i actually went to the university of memphis and did a computational um project so computational chemistry is just chemistry on the computer which was very weird to me i'd never heard of it um and so that was just a brand new field I hadn't explored yet. I did inorganic, I've done organic. So I was like, why not do computational just to see what it's about? 
And it was great. I really liked that research also. I liked being able to do things on the computer. It was really cool to model things. I I was studying the structures of molecules that are found in space, which is amazing. Um, and I was actually able to get a paper out of that research, which is huge for an undergraduate. Um, and I think that about summarizes my research experience, Dr. Masterson. Yeah, and so did the REU program, um, did, did it, is it what ultimately helped you decide to go to graduate school or was there some other um, event that really led you down the graduate school path as opposed to saying, going to medical school or, or going to, um, you know, just, just the workforce? So my career goals at the time as an undergraduate was to be a college professor. I loved teaching. I was actually teaching labs as an undergraduate my junior and senior year, and I absolutely loved it. And I was told to be a college professor, I had to get my PhD. So that's initially what started the idea of graduate school. And it actually got a little stressful when I was applying my senior year because I had to make the decision of, do I want a research-based chemistry degree or do I want to do chemistry education? And I think you remember I was having that conflict and I was really struggling with it. And um, what ended up making my decision was actually you and my advisor from my REU program. I was debating it and I was asking advice for him. And both of you told me that I would do really well in a research based and um, I was thinking about my experiences, about the research I've done, about presenting my research, and I realized that I actually did really enjoy research. I loved presenting it at conferences and just being able to share information that not necessarily people have um, been exposed to before. So that's ultimately what made my decision. Okay, well, fantastic. So Ari, you had a little bit to do with it, and your experience here at, at, at USM certainly had, sounds like it had a lot to do with it. Absolutely. So how did the undergraduate program here at USM prepare you for going into graduate school? Many ways. Um, mo mostly my research experience gave me a really good foundation or starting point um, to do well in a graduate program. And so I had the basic organic skills to work in an organic lab, which is the lab I'm in. Um, but I also had such a um, diverse background that, one, it made me attractive to um, my advisor, um, who does a lot of interdisciplinary research. Um, I, that's one of the reasons why I chose University of South Carolina. They're very collaborative, and I like that. I don't want to do the same thing every single day, and I don't. Um, and so that was one part of it. The second part is I'm able to apply what I learned in the classroom. So the reactions you do in order one, I have done a lot of them. I understand how they work. So if they don't work, I can more easily figure out what happened there or I can logically think through what might have happened. And the biggest impact, I would say it actually just gave me the confidence to pursue a PhD program. I remember being in Dr. Masterson's um, organic class, and he was also my academic advisor. And I think what kind of started this all was our first advisement meeting since I was in his organic class, we sat down and he's like, I don't care about your grades. We don't need to talk about that. You're going to be fine. I know you're going to be fine. I want to talk about you in class. And so basically he asked me why I wasn't more confident in the classroom. Why was I not speaking out more or anything? And I was like, I don't want to be wrong. He's like, that's fine. Like, but you're not wrong. And really told me that I had a future in this field if I decided to. And so doing that, doing the oral presentation at the conference really kind of showed me that I did have the skills. I had the motivation. Um, to actually be successful in a graduate program. And so I also did the honors program, as Dr. M Masterson mentioned, and you'll have to do an honors thesis and you do an oral comp, I think is what we call it, where you actually defend the thesis. And that was a really good introduction to um, graduate defenses. So I've done, as part of your program, depending on where you go, 
you might have to defend your research or do research updates um, in front of your, either your committee or the department. I think USM, you guys do department-based um, defenses. And so that was a really good exposure to that kind of atmosphere where you have professors questioning the research you're doing. Do you really understand what's happening there? And so it, it went fantastically, but um, in my opinion, Dr. Masterson, you might not agree. No, it went, it went great. So, but yeah, those are the different ways. There was, and I'm still learning the different ways that my undergrad experience has really helped me. Well, fantastic. That, that's great. Um, and it sounds like, you know, not just the undergraduate curriculum in chemistry, but also the honors curriculum came into play a lot, uh, having to do uh, multiple semesters of research in an honors program as opposed to just a single semester that's required of, of, a, of a regular chemistry um, track individual. Um, and you ended up doing how many semesters, if I'm counting right? Four or five, right? Five, yeah, I did four with you, well, really kind of six if you think, if you include the REU. So I did four semesters with you, one semester with Dr. Wallace and the month at the REU program. Okay, yeah, so so you, you, you grabbed uh, research uh, kind of by the horns early on and, and, and got a, a, a great diversity of, of experiences, including one away from home. Was that your first time to, when you went to Memphis, was that your first time to be away from, from home, if you will, for that long a period of time? Or, or had you experienced that type of thing before? Um, kind of. So I went to the uh, Mississippi School for Math and Science for high school. So I did residential high school for two years. So I lived away from home, but wasn't as different as being at Southern. So yeah, it was farthest I've gone in terms of distance, yes. Um, but length of duration, I wouldn't say no. Um, and you talking about doing more than a semester, I wanna iterate that that actually really helped me because as a graduate student, I get to train undergrads. And with organic, especially, we talk about your first semester, you're really just learning the basic techniques, like what the equipment is and all that stuff. It's really your second semester where you really get into the good stuff. Okay, great. So final qu final question for me anyway is, uh, can you describe your, your uh, current status as a graduate student a little bit? Tell them, tell them where you're at with that and, and how, um, you know, you've really built upon your um, uh, knowledge that you gained as an undergraduate. Yes. Um, so I, I am a fifth year graduate student. So I'm in my last year of my program, thankfully. <laughs> um, but I'm also this semester instructor of record for organic one chemistry. So I am teaching my own organic class, which is really great. I guess I think if you recall, that was one of my goals or my career goal whenever I was an undergrad was to be a college professor. Well, I'm doing it at the same time while I'm in grad school. Um, and it's going really well. Um, so basically I instruct undergraduates and I can relate to uh, what they're learning. I can tie that back to my research experiences. Um, I can tell them, well, I I learned this, this, if you were to do this reaction in real life, this is what you're going to see. And some of them find that really interesting. Um, as a senior graduate student, I mentor undergraduate researchers and I really enjoy that experience. And I also have been mentoring new graduate students that have been joining the lab. And I had a really awesome, uh, I witnessed something really awesome with my undergrad student a couple weeks ago. She, um, she was setting reactions up and she was asking me, wait, what am I supposed to do here? And then before I could say anything, she's like, wait a second, we're talking about this. So this ties back to this. Okay, I got it. And it was just great to see that growth in her of being able to answer her own questions without needing me. And she's worked in the lab for a year. So this is her second semester also. Um, because of my background, I'm able to learn new skills relatively quickly. So I did computational and organic. Since I've been in graduate school, um, I've worked on a photochemistry project, which was brand new to me. And my advisor felt comfortable with me starting that project because I have such a distinctive background. So I've done analytical chemistry, I've done physical chemistry. I did some um, electrochemistry, which is really cool. There's a lab in, in organ or maybe instrumental analysis that you'll do. I might be wrong, it could be analytical, sorry. Um, 
And so that's really allowed me to participate in a lot of different projects, which um, has given me more exposure and it makes me more competitive for when I start applying for jobs next semester, um, which will be really helpful. And so just the confidence has been major in helping me. So um, continuing with um, doing really well at conferences, when I present my research, um, when I, I really enjoy it, and that's very, that translates to people who are watching me or listening to me. I've actually had, since I was a second year, when I go to conferences, I've had a few people give me job offers and I've had to tell them, I, I have a few years left till I graduate, but I have those connections if I decide to pursue them um, next semester. And I've won more poster competitions against other graduate students. And there was one where I won, I was even going up against postdocs. And so that was, I did not think that would happen. And so it's just having that confidence to pursue those avenues is amazing. So I told Dr. Masterson no so many times about the things I didn't want to do or I was too scared to do. I even told Dr. Wallace when he first asked me to join his research group, no, I was like, I can't do research. And here I am like nine years later about to graduate my PhD in a research-based degree. And I think it's just important to, instead of saying no, saying yes to those things, even if they scare you. So you asked me what was the reason for going to graduate school and my debate between Kim ED versus PhD. I asked myself, what scared me more and which one did I actually want? And the one that scared me more was the PhD, but I didn't really have a reason not to do it. And so those are the questions I asked myself to get where I am. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. And we never doubted that you would be as successful as you are, never <laughs> once. So, so those are all the formal questions I have. I, I just want to give you an, an opportunity now to tell these uh, Chemistry 108 students, basically to get leave them with some advice that you would have given yourself when you were a freshman, knowing what you know now. What would you, if you could go back in time, what would you tell your freshman self? Do everything you can. Um, don't put stuff off. If you want to do the abroad study, do it. Um, there's always going to be a better time to do something, but you're never going to know when that time hits you. Uh, do the research. It's great. Uh, don't be scared to switch labs. I was terrified. I thought I was going to majorly offend Dr. Wallace if I switched groups. He didn't. He, he was like, okay. <laughs> that was literally his answer. And so, um, and actually, I still talk to Dr. Wallace. I bumped into him at a conference, and it was so much fun talking to him and being on the other side of the mirror, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, talk to your professors. They know so much. They, I, Dr. Bastion has advised me so much on my career that I don't know if I would have made the same decisions mm -hmm. if I didn't have that advice. Um, they have so many experiences. So in graduate school, one of the big decisions they – they ask you, are you going to go academia? Are you going to go industry? Talk to your professors because some of them have been in industry and there was a reason they translated or went into academia. And so there's just a lot of valuable information that um, you're not going to know unless you speak up and ask and everything. And they're so supportive. I loved my experience at USM. Um, the whole department, I love talking to Dr. Meow, Dr. Masterson, Dr. Pigza. She had just started whenever I joined or when I was still an undergrad. Dr. Donahue, they're fantastic because they just have all this experience and they're willing to share it with you. And even Dr. Guo, when I took him for PCHEM, they, they love it when you come and talk to them in their office and they want to get to know you. And that makes fantastic rec letters. Um, so, yeah, those those were what I got for you. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, Shelby, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you've got a lot going on right now uh, to talk to our Chemistry 108 students, and I know they're going to love the story you told and, and take a lot from it. So I want to thank you again. Yes, thank you.